I'm trying to get back to me. And I think that's why I wrote the book, that if I somehow explored it, went down sort of that path, that somehow I could find my peace. I think that's why I wrote it. And also it was sort of like bucking the system. Like it's, it's sort of like that, that feeling you have, especially when I was a kid, where you can walk in the room and say, you know, you MF, this is who I am and I'm not apologizing for it. It was my way of saying that too. You accept what you got to accept and you work with it. This man is in my school. Well, he's got to be somewhere. Maybe he's, he's doing some good too. After the boys. Well, maybe some of them boys want to get caught. Viola Davis earned her first Academy Award nomination for her breakout performance in the 2008 drama, Doubt. And today, she's the most nominated black actress ever with four Oscar nods, including her 2017 win for Fences. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Viola's most recent project, The First Lady, premiered April 17th on Showtime. Ma'am? Ma'am, that's gonna take some getting used to. The 10 episode anthology series explores the roles of three of the most influential first ladies in American history and stars Gillian Anderson as Eleanor Roosevelt, Michelle Pfeiffer as Betty Ford, and Viola Davis as Michelle Obama. I learned a long time ago that there are some people I'll never please. All I can do is what I believe is right. I feel proud that I took the risk because I definitely was at a point in my life, in my career, where I needed a challenge. You know, that, that sort of uh, job that wakes you up. And that's what I felt with Michelle Obama, to be able to transform into someone so iconic and to do, and do that work during the pandemic, uh, which for me, I know a lot of people felt, oh, okay, we're, you know, we don't have to do anything now. We're at least we're at home, we're locked down, but I never really settled into the lockdown thing. So it was a really, really good exercise on remembering discipline, remembering focus, remembering why I do what I do. Viola also serves as one of the show's executive producers, a role she always appreciates and enjoys. It does give you a different perspective because um, you feel like you have more of a voice, uh, which is horrible. You know, when you start off your career, you feel like that's it. You can't say anything. You just get, you go on the stage, you hit your mark, and then you take your ass home. Um, so it's way more empowering, absolutely, to sort of drive the narrative. And you know what? It's something that I'm proud of. It really is. I, I'm not, you're not always proud of the things that you do and how they end up, but this one is a good one. April also marks the release of Viola's new memoir, Finding Me, an inspiring story that spans her entire life, including her difficult and sometimes traumatic experience growing up in extreme poverty. All of those things happened to me, the trauma, the poverty, the sexual abuse, um, the violence, all of those things happen. But I own it and it's a part of who I am, but there's a lot of who I am and I count it all joy. I do, I count it all joy. I don't feel, I absolutely don't feel that, um, that you just sort of cut out a part of uh, all the bad parts and you keep a certain part of you and that's the only part that, you know, that exists that you could celebrate. I don't, I celebrate all of it. Because what I realize is everything that I've experienced is what connects me to the world. It's given me an extraordinary sense of compassion and it's a huge foundation for my work. And there's no question, Viola's work has been wildly successful. Since 2009, she's been nominated for four Oscars and five Emmys, winning each award once. But despite this remarkable run, Viola found herself at an emotional crossroads, which ultimately led to her decision to write Finding Me, as a search not only for herself, but also for deeper meaning in her life. I would have to say that I had an enormous existential crisis of meaning in my life. I did, and I am. Um, where you just hit a point in your life where you thought, 
This is supposed to be it. This is supposed to be, wait a minute. And it's not it. And, um, you know, for the past, what, 13 years, I've experienced a different stratosphere of my career. And I remember the little girl who always sort of wanted to be maybe a little famous, a great actress. I wanted the house, you know, because of how I grew up. And um, so then I hit it. I hit it. And then the disillusionment came. The exhaustion came. The sort of... Um, um, disappointment came and then you think to yourself maybe it's just that you're burnt out which absolutely is entirely true too but that wasn't it either the existential crisis came with that is not the thing Viola that's gonna give your life meaning it is not success is not its significance, it's um, sort of reconciling that young girl in me and sort of healing from the past and finding home, finding that place that literally is that place of peace and joy and um, that defines your life. And I always thought acting defined my life. And it doesn't, it just doesn't. I was still hiding a huge part of my story. It's almost like I reinvented all the things that I wanted to reinvent and tossed away the rest of it. And um, look at me, I'm getting emotional. But I wanted to, it's like when I look at pictures of my daughter when she was a baby, and I sometimes spend long periods of time looking at her and just oh, longing for her when she had her baba, looking, oh, just, and then I look at myself. You know, when you look at pictures, you go on memory lane, and you, and you see it differently, right? I'm looking at little Viola, and I'm seeing how strong she was. I'm seeing how she was a spitfire. I'm seeing her beauty. I'm seeing who I was before the world got at me. And I'm figuring if I can find that girl, that's it. That's what God made me to be. That can be my home. My therapist is always saying that, find home. Probably should have been the title of my book, but it was fine in me, but that's it. That's the place. Viola and her husband, actor slash producer Julius Tennant, were married in 2003. And nearly two decades later, Viola certainly has a lot to be grateful for. That I have a partner. That I actually have someone who has my back. That I actually have someone who sees me. That's what I'm most grateful for. But before, I think that I had people who were fair weather friends. People who were with me but just as long as the fantasy survived. As soon as the real Viola and not her representative showed up in the relationship, they were gone. And there's a part of that that makes you feel worthless, like not worthy to love. Like if I showed you all of me and you're still sitting there saying, I see it, I see the cracks, I see the mess, but I'm sitting right here and I still love you. That makes a life. It does. That's what I'm most grateful for that I, oh, and the other thing is that um, I, I was ready to receive it. I am really grateful for that. 
Um, yeah, that's what I'm most grateful for. And that he's so cute. Today, Viola and Julius have one child together, 11-year-old Genesis. And Viola admits she's already bracing herself for those fast-approaching teenage years. I'm terrified. It keeps me up at night. But listen, I'm going to try to respect her. How's that? I'm not going to mold and shape her into anyone I want her to be. And I, and. It is my opinion, operative word opinion, that a lot of people try to mold and shape their kids into their fantasy child or an extension of their dreams, an extension of their hopes. And that's just not what it is. They are their own separate human being. And I'm going to try to honor that as much as I can you know, there's a part of me that feels like sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious because I don't want her to make the same mistakes I made. I don't want her to be the person I was and I don't want to do, and I, and I try to hold on too tight. So I'm trying to let go and really enjoy um, Genesis revealing who she is to me and me honoring it. That's how I'm good, that's my approach. Meanwhile, with the premiere of The First Lady and the release of Finding Me, the 56-year-old wife, mother, and world-class actress has one word to describe this moment in her life. Peaceful. You know what? I'm gonna say it. I'm even driving better. You know what? And I'm not a very good driver. I, at least I never thought I was a very good driver, really, because when I get behind the wheel of the car in LA, I feel my anxiety going up. And the other day, or a couple of weeks ago, I realized no more anxiety. I'm, real, I'm recognizing in my life how fear and anxiety has been greatly reduced. That's how my life has changed. That there is a settling into me. They're settling into, there, there's no other life out there except for the life you've been given. And you wrestle with it, you do. You can wrestle with it for a while and then look at you know, your neighbors or whatever and say, why didn't I get that life? Like it's literally a department store. You could like choose what kind of designer life you want until you settle into this is it. And guess what? It's a great life. I've been given a great opportunity and not just even with my career just with my heart. I'm starting to see that now.